This is Renzo Racer, the brand new racing game from developer Encina Soft. It recently hit Steam Early Access, and I've spent the last few days speeding through the 20 cartoony levels and using the 16 adorable animal characters. I know you have a lot of questions about Renzo Racer, so let's crib this! Is this another kart racing game? It is, but hear me out. From Snake Pass to Ukulele to Skylar and Plux, I guess. This has been a pretty great year for 3D platformers starring cartoony mascot characters. So given this sudden interest in the genre, it only makes sense that we get a kart racing game that's filled with characters that look like they should be jumping over bottomless pits in other video games. That's where Renzo Racer comes in. This is a racing game that evokes the bad old days when every company wanted to chase the success of Mario Kart. You choose from over a dozen animal racers and speed through a wide variety of cartoony levels. This is where the game really shines. The developers do an admirable job of recreating a lot of familiar track types, such as the Kingdom setting, Pirate Island, several levels made of ice, a futuristic neon city, the spooky cemetery, the sandy desert, and even the Rainbow Road. Just about the only thing missing are the familiar Nintendo characters that make Mario Kart so much fun. Are the characters any good? They're fine, but only a few stand out. Without a popular franchise or licensed characters to fall back on, the developers have been forced to come up with 16 cartoon animals that kinda sorta look like the type of mascot characters you would see in this type of game. They pull it off, for the most part. You get Renzo Raccoon, Skyla Skunk, Lenny Lizard, Timmy Turtle, Alex Alligator, Rudo Rad, and more. Easily the best character is Sherman Shark which is dumb in the silliest way possible. If the rest of the cast was this goofy, then we'd really have something fun to talk about. Seeing as we don't know any of these characters, the developers are going to have to make it a point to create cinemas or intro videos that give these animals unique personalities. There isn't much of that in the early access version I played, but I'm willing to accept that some of the characters and world building may come late in the development. I have my fingers crossed. Did I just see you racing on water? You better believe it! The one cool thing I can say about Renzo Racer is that there's as much boat racing as there is traditional karting. While the gameplay doesn't change as much as you might expect, it still does a good job of adding a new dynamic and giving us different types of levels. I really like the boat racing, and I appreciate that it doesn't constantly switch from one type of vehicle to another mid-level like other racing games. Regardless of whether you're on water or dry land, the real problem is the handling isn't very good. It's too easy to get hung up on the obstacles or get tossed around when you screw up a landing. It never feels like there's any weight to the vehicles, which is something I'm hoping they'll fix before the finished build is released. I was genuinely surprised by the amount of content already in this early access release. There are 16 characters and 20 tracks to race right now, which is more than some $60 games I've bought. But even with all that content, Renzo Racer still has a long way to go before it's worth recommending. There are no power-ups in its current state, which ends up making each race boring and a little too easy. It also has crummy physics characters with no personality, and quite a few lackluster levels. These are just a few of the things that need to be ironed out before release. At $5, this early access build is reasonably priced, but it still has a long way to go before it comes anywhere close to matching games like Mario Kart or Crash Team Racing. I'm going to keep my eye on Renzo Racer. Hey, thanks for watching our preview. So, here's the question of the day. What do kart racing games need to do in order to be relevant in 2017? Do they completely need to change their formula, just go away entirely, or something else? Let me know in the comments below. 
Looking forward, I'm going to be debuting a brand new series next week where I look at E3 swag and debate whether it's a collectible or crap. We're also going to be looking at Electronic Gaming Monthly's worst reviewed games of 1989, plus reviews of Monolith, Air Guitar Warrior Gamepad Edition, and more. Yeah, it's going to be a busy week, so I recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.